Hey folks, I hope you guys are all doing okay, taking care of your families. These are troubled times. We are all self-quarantined, no matter which country that you are living in. I would have never believed if someone told me that the entire world is going to get shut down like a month from now. Unbelievable. The bright side that I see is we can brush up our astrophotography skills. So I'm back on my Rasa 11. So last night I have clouds uh, moving across Texas and there is a window of like two hours I think uh, between the first set of clouds and the second set of clouds. On the Google Maps I saw it is going to show like somewhere like 8.30 p.m. I will have clear night and then maybe for two hours and then clouds will come back again. So I moved my telescope as soon as I'm done with my work last night and you know waiting for that moment to happen. I didn't actually get any clear uh, sky and I've been waiting for a while. So I waited until like 10.30 in the night and then sure enough as soon as I moved my telescope inside like 30 minutes from that time uh, maybe around 11 I got clear night. I know like it's going to last for like another two hours. I rushed my telescope outside. It takes time actually to move Rasa 11. So I put Rasa 11 on the wheels. Uh, so I have to ask my wife for help because uh, these wheels will stuck when I move outside my garage. So I need to like you know wake her up and said uh, I need to move my telescope outside. So by I think 1, 1 p.m. Uh, I was able to capture uh, decent enough pictures. I think I got like 60 pictures for 2 minutes of M101 and I think I lost 20 of them. I think there are some cloud. So I went into site and I looked at the number of stars uh, when I'm doing the subframe selector. So when I have lesser number of stars, usually I remove those frames and I was able to get I think around 40 pictures. If there is one telescope, if somebody asked me to pick for astrophotography, that would definitely be Rasa 11. I do like Rasa 8. I think Rasa 8 is actually compact, smaller and uh, Rasa 36 is way too big and also it's very expensive. I can't lift Rasa 36 by myself. I think one of the things that I'm realizing with Rasa is even though the window that I had last night was like two hours, I got a decent enough uh, data that I could actually process it. I like actually refractors as well. I have Explore Scientific 127 mm. It takes good pictures, but I think it's very slow compared to F2, right? The, those are F7, whereas with Rasa, you can easily take pictures quickly. So you can capture like two hours and you get a decent amount of data to work with. Also, the price wise, it's not like really going to break your bank. You know, if you want to get a good refractor that are in the similar setting, you are looking somewhere between like $4,000 to $6,000. In that perspective, I think Rasa 11 is still a cheaper telescope in my mind. I use the ZWO071, you know, the one shot color camera with the Bader IR UV filter. So I was, the focus is coming okay. The focus came up to 1.9, 1.98. Uh, I couldn't get that 1.5 uh, focus yet, but definitely I got to a decent focus. If you are new to this channel, I do astrophotography using Rasa 11. Celestron 14, uh, Explore Scientific 127 and DSLR cameras. If you are interested watching these videos more, please feel free to click on the button subscribe and click on the notifications button. Uh, thank you very much for watching and stay safe. I will show you guys the picture of uh, that M101 that I took. <laughs>